Good morning. Good to be with you today as we continue in our study of Mark's Gospel. Today we're going to be in the seventh chapter beginning at the 24th verse and continuing through 37. Beginning in verse 24, it says, Jesus left that place and went to the vicinity of Tyre. Now he is not in Israel. He is in Phoenicia. He is north of the Sea of Galilee. He's about 30 miles north of Capernaum. He is not in Jewish territory. And undoubtedly, he will be running into Gentiles. Uh, the gospel is emphatic about uh, the Jews first and the Gentiles second, but it is inevitable that Jesus will come in contact with Gentile people. And so he is in Tyre. This is a coastal city. It's about 30 miles uh, south of Sidon. It is what we would call as modern Lebanon. It is northwest of Capernaum. But he is in this vicinity. And he entered a house and did not want anyone to know it, yet he could not keep his presence secret. Each day that passes, Jesus is closer to Jerusalem and his humiliation. Uh, he wanted to have time with his disciples to instruct them and talk to them and care for them, but he could not keep his presence secret. And just as a, a precursor to this, this is a hard uh, section of Scripture. This is very difficult in how Jesus responds. So beginning in verse 25, it says, in fact, as soon as she heard about him, a woman whose little daughter was possessed by an evil spirit came and fell at his feet. The woman was a Greek, born in Syria and Phoenicia. She begged Jesus to drive the demon out of her daughter. That's interesting. This is a Gentile woman. We're right on the cusp of transitioning between the word being shared with the people of Israel only, the Jews only, first to the Jews, then to the Gentiles. We're right on that kind of a cusp where the word will be available to all. And this woman, this Phoenician woman, this Syrophoenician woman, comes humbly to Jesus, obviously knows who he is and his reputation, and she asks, uh, please heal my little daughter who is possessed by a demon. And you would think, well, Jesus would say, well, of course, glad to, you know, be healed. But he didn't. And his response is kind of hard, and it has caused a lot of debate and conversation over the years. He says in verse 27, first, let the children eat all they want, he told her, for it is not right to take the children's bread and toss it to their dogs. To toss it to their dogs. Now, the Gentiles at that time were considered to be unclean. Uh, they were referred to in either one of two ways, either as pigs, and you'll remember an earlier story about Jesus uh, uh, throwing out demons into the herd of swine. The second thing were dogs. Dogs were scavengers. They weren't like our household pets now, and they were always in touch with dead bodies, and they were, they were continually unclean, and the, the Gentiles were believed by the Israelites to be unclean, and they were referred to as either dogs or pigs. And so this is harsh. 
First, let the children eat all they want, the children being the Jews. For it is not right to take the children's bread, the the Jewish tradition, the Jewish word, the Jewish uh, knowledge of of God uh, and Jesus the Savior is, is not right to take from them who have it first and give it to the Gentiles. For it is not right to take the children's bread and toss it to their dogs. And this was not an affectionate term like pets. I mean, it was, it was very harsh. Uh, you wouldn't expect Jesus to be that way. You wouldn't expect that kind of response, especially from this humble uh, Syrophoenician woman that asked for his help. And she responded in verse 28 in a, in a remarkable way, it seems like, possessed by a lot of wisdom. Yes, Lord, she replied, but even, but even the dogs under the table eat the children's crumbs. And then he told her for such a reply, you may go, the demon has left your daughter. So she just needed a small bit of grace. And this is the only miracle recorded in Mark where Jesus cleansed without giving a word, saying be cleansed or going to the presence of the person. Uh, He just said, go on home, she is cleansed. But it's interesting the response because if we take it as Jesus being harsh, if Jesus being critical, then this is out of the character of Jesus. This would be sinful for Jesus to be critical and to be, be unusually harsh with a person. So we have to think that there's something else. Maybe he wanted to stir her faith. Maybe he wanted to encourage her in a way that would follow him, but she responded out of wisdom by saying, yes, Lord, even the children, even the dogs get the crumbs that the children drop. So in the end, he honored her request, and in Verse 30, it says, so she went home and found her child lying on the bed and the demon gone. So I think that ultimately, despite the, what might be considered sharpness or harshness that Jesus honored the request of this Gentile woman, the the Syrophoenician and Remember that the Phoenicians had been a part of a group of uh, people that continually uh, harassed the people of Israel. So there was a natural ethnicity difference between these two groups of people. But we're right on the cusp, again, of the Word of God going from just the people of Israel, the Jews first, but going into the whole world, to the Gentiles. And then in verse 31, we read of a different kind of miracle. Then Jesus left the vicinity of Tyre and went through Sidon, down to the Sea of Galilee and into the region of the Decapolis, Now, the Decapolis is a combination of two words, which means ten cities. And again, this is an area that is further north than Tyre, maybe maybe 20 miles. So he took this way to avoid uh, contact with with Jewish rulers or or Gentile rulers, he wanted to avoid trouble, he wanted to 
to uh, go to the people there to minister. And in verse 32, there some people brought to him a man who was deaf and could hardly talk. And they begged him to place his hand on the man, likely a Gentile. Again, we're not in Israel. And it's interesting the difference here between the way Jesus responded and also the, the, the situation. Here, this man was brought to him, much like the story of the man lowered on a cot through the roof for Jesus to heal. This man was brought uh, to him. He could not hear. He could hardly speak, the word says, so he might have had a speech impediment. Uh, he could see, but could not hear or speak. And it's interesting in verse 33, after he took him aside, away from the crowd, Jesus put his fingers into the man's ears. Then he spit and touched the man's tongue. So in this we see the complete uh, antithesis in terms of how Jesus treated the request. The Syrophoenician woman uh, was not touched. He didn't speak to the child. He didn't touch the child. It was a more uh, the distance type of healing, a complete disassociation, if you will, with the person that needed healing. But in this case, it's very up close and personal. Jesus reached out and put his fingers in the man's ears. He spit and touched the man's tongue. And in those days, spit was considered to have healing properties, but it's interesting to me how Jesus communicated with this man who was deaf and could not speak, could barely speak. After he took him aside to get away from the commotion and the distraction and the other people, Jesus put his fingers into the man's ears then he spit and touched the man's tongue. He looked up into heaven and with a deep sigh said to him, Epaphatha, which means be open. I remember we talked last week about the well-known hymn, He Touched Me, and in this case it's a, a perfect example of Jesus touching him and, and said, be open. At this, the man's ears were opened, his tongue was loosened, and he began to speak plainly. In Isaiah, in the 35th chapter, in beginning in the 5th verse, uh, it is written, Then will the eyes of the blind be opened, the ears of the deaf unstopped, then the lame leap like deer, and the mute tongue shout for joy. What a beautiful image, and what a promise for this man that could not speak plainly and could not hear, that Jesus touched him and opened his ears and loosened his tongue. And then in verse 36, Jesus commanded them not to tell anyone. But the more he did so, the more they kept talking about it. I can imagine. I mean, could you keep it quiet if you had been unable to hear, unable to speak, and Jesus touched you and allowed you to hear him, to see him, to touch Jesus? They couldn't keep quiet. They told about it. And of course, one of the marks 
of Mark's gospel is the was the secrecy that that he he encouraged. And finally, in verse thirty-seven, people were overwhelmed with amazement. He had done everything well, they said. He even makes the deaf hear and the mute speak. What a great message. The touch of Jesus. The ability to speak and to hear. Let's pray together. Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for your blessings. We thank you for the beauty of your creation. We thank you, Father, for your word that we can study and learn from it and grow from it. Uh, Father, we pray for those today that are in the hospital. pray that you would bring your healing touch upon them. We pray, Father, for our church and its leadership, and we pray that you would guide and direct them. Uh, Father, as we leave and go about our uh, day-to-days, we pray that you would be with us and and show us the way where we can speak the word and that people would be willing to hear. All of these things we ask in the mighty name of Jesus. And all God's children said, Amen. God bless you.